If you want to make a cool animation without doing fancy slides or rotations, then this texture transition is for you. This is what it looks like, so let's dive straight into Blender. So we are going to do a texture animation right now. I've already got my model brought into Blender and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to bring this up and go over to the shader editor because this is going to be a texture transition and thus we are going to do everything right over here. So first of all, this is my original setup of the original model. So I've made this model quite some time ago and I just brought it in from the asset browser. So I have something to work with to show you guys how this texture animation works. So first of all, I'm heading over to the principal BSDF. I'm going to click on it, shift D and duplicate it right over here. And now I'm going to select both of these principal BSDFs and press control zero. And now we get a mix shader. So let me make this principal BSDF black, just for example. So the mix shader is now mixing it equally, which means that it is becoming darker. But as you can see, if we put the mix to one, it will be one texture. And if we put it to zero, it will be the other texture, namely this one. So what we want to do is to make a texture that is animated, that animates this factor. And as this factor animates, we can change the texture from one to another. Now this looks pretty boring, so we're not going to animate this. We're going to do it with a gradient. So shift A, gradient, texture. Now, if we press on control shift and click, we can see where the gradient is located. And this is not at the position that I want it to be. So I'm going to click on the gradient texture, control T, and now we get a mapping node. And if you go into the rotation and change the Y by 90, then it will be rotated towards the bottom. And that is what we want. And what we're going to do now is bring in a color ramp. And I've got a shortcut for this, but you can press shift A and type color ramp. So color ramp right over here. And if you move the black slider, you can already see what's going to happen. So we're going to move this texture and this will be the factor deciding which texture will be where. So on the white texture, there will be probably the orange and on the black texture, there will be the uh, black from this render. So what I'm going to do first in order to make this a whole lot simpler is to add in a plane, scale it up and select both these edges, press E and Z, bring this up, select these edges, control B and then scroll with the mouse wheel and shape this smooth. So now we've got a setup for this entire render. I'm going to give it a texture real quick, a dot, and I will make it blue. Why blue? Well, because our uh, original life boy, I think it's called something like that, is orange. And I like this color setup. So now we have orange and blue, which is nice. So here we go back into the life boy. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, but let's just call it the model for now. And I will bring in a math note math right over here and this is an add node. Now what we want to do is take this gradient texture and combine it with some noise. Why? Well, this looks very linear and it's obvious that it's just a straight line going upwards. And we actually want to make it look like it's moving in some otherworldly sense. So I will bring in a noise texture and the factor can go into the value of the add node. Then I will select both the gradient texture and the add node, press control zero and we get a mix node. And now we're going to use a blend mode not a lot of people use. Uh, it's set on mix when you just open it up like this, but I'm going to set it to color burn. Now, why color burn? Color burn actually makes sure that the whites are preserved, but the blacks are exaggerated. Uh, if we use this noise texture, for example, so let's click on this. We have a lot of grayscale values in between. So there is like gray over here and some black maybe over here, maybe over there and some whites, but this is not strong enough, even with the add node. If we play around with this, uh, of course you can do something funny with it like so, but there's a lot of these values right in between and it will not look the way that we want it to. So before we combine them, I'm going into this principal BSDF and I will make it metallic, decrease the roughness and make this some type of bluish color, something like this. Now this already looks like something that we can transition into. Now going back over here, we've got our noise texture, we've got our add node, and now we want to mix them together. And that's happening right over here. And what does it look like? Well, like this. And that is exactly what we want because now it is broken up in such a fashion that it looks way more randomized and that is very cool. So I've got this add node set to minus 0.4, let's say, and you can do with this whatever you want. I think we have to play around with it depending on how far the gradient goes, but I will get back to that later. First of all, the color burn, it preserves the whites while exaggerating the blacks. So if we look at this, it's all grayscale, baby. We don't want that. We want it to be more black over here and more white over here. So we have a clear separation between the textures. Now, this is what we are going to be animating. So we've got the factor and it's going from zero to one and then it will animate the texture. But as you can see, it's not actually reaching the top. 
And we can play around with our color ramp in order to get that done. But I think this is a bit of a hassle. So what we want to do is increase this X value until it becomes entirely white. Somewhere over here, take this color ramp and make it even more white. We're going to turn the black all the way to the left, by the way. And right now, if we increase the factor, let's see what happens. Well, we only get halfway. Reason for it, our add node is not strong enough. So we should increase or actually decrease the value of this add node in order to get more black value. So I'm going to set it to minus 0.74. And then with this setup, this exact setup, it will work out. As you can see from factor zero to one, at first it's entirely white. That's what we want because we want it to be one solid texture. It shouldn't start like over here and we already see some of the other texture going through. No, it should be this texture and then it should be this texture. And that is what's happening right now. And that's absolutely fine. Now, what we can do if we set this to like half, we can look around in our noise texture and increase the scale, for example, or decrease the scale. I'm going to set it to two and increase the detail. And then you have something that looks like this. You can also play around with the roughness, maybe increase it just a little bit or decrease it depending on your taste. I'm going to increase it to 0.55. Right now we have this setup where the X location is slightly shifted and we have our noise texture, our add node, which makes sure that we randomize our gradient. And now everything is set up for the animation to occur. So I'm going to plug this color ramp into the factor. Have a look at our mix shader. So we've got our orange, which is the white, and we've got the blue, which is the black. So you can animate it either way. You can either have it go from this to this and have it be real slow, like so. And that looks pretty awesome, if you ask me. Now you can crank some of these values, play around with it, like with the color ramp, just bring it a little bit in or bring it out and now it becomes a bit harsher. Let's set up a quick scene to make this look a bit better. Going over here into cycles, cycles, GPU, add in the plane, plane right over there. Go into the modifiers, Geolites Pro, which is my own add-on, which I'm going to use. I'm going to increase the emission strength, decrease the amount of lights and rotate this around so we get like a 45 degree angle. And that already looks a lot better, but we could use a top light scale. So I'm going to bring that in too and uh, bring it upwards just a little bit and make sure that it looks cool. Now I'm going to turn it off for our vision, shading, visibility, camera. You can get the Geolites add-on in the description. It's on Gumroad and maybe on Blender Market by now. So anyway, this is our texture transition. And what I found is that if you animate it slower, then it will work better. It will look cooler than when it's really fast. So. Really fast, doesn't look that cinematic. So what we're going to do is bring it upwards, go over to the timeline, right over here. Now I'm going to set the factor to one, press I on this mix color node. You can click on the mix color node, by the way, and then you will see the keyframes if you click on it. If you do not click on it, you will not see the keyframe. So keep that in mind. I'm going to set this to uh, frame 100 for now and set this to zero, press I once again. And now if we animate this, it is moving like that. Now, very cool, if you want it to be slower, simply move the keyframe to the right. It will start a bit later, but it will be slower and it looks a lot more interesting. But this is not the end, because you want to make it look even better. And the way we are going to do it is by adding some displacement, because this is really just two textures going over each other without there being any deformity in the mesh at all. And you want to deform it if you want to make it look good. So, displacement displacement over here and we can use this same setup to drive the displacement because the displacement can also operate with black and white values which is great because we're going to plug this into the height go to plug this into the displacement go into the material tab under settings enable displacement and bump now it will be way too much i'm heading over into the skill of the displacement node 0 0.01 now let's see what it looks like and it's already a bit more organic. And that's exactly what we want. You can also increase the resolution of this by subdividing it maybe two times because I've got a pretty good machine. These renders don't take a lot of time. And now it looks like this, very cool. Now, if you want to make this even cooler, you can set up your camera right here at a empty right over here, empty, go into the camera, to the depth of field, select the empty, and now we have a cool bokeh effect right over here as it is progressing. You can increase that bokeh effect or decrease it. Do whatever you like. Going into view per display, passepartout. And right now we have this cool texture animation going on. So that is the way it works. It's a very simple tutorial and it's done relatively quickly. There's one more thing I want to show you. So if you select this uh, life boy or <laughs> the model, 
then we can go over to the gradient texture and set it to let's say radial for example and now everything will disappear which is not really a problem because we have to play around with the rotation so i'm going over into the gradient texture once again play around with the rotation until you start to see something happening that is correct so over there and maybe we have to play around with the y and the x and this is just playing around until it works basically uh, but now what you can do is take this x value and let's see what it looks like doing it on the other side <laughs> no problem let's just have a look at it and now it's really going from that side towards that side which also looks pretty cool. So you can definitely play around with that, but you really have to fiddle around with this mapping node in order to make it work. So either way, the linear works, you can try radial, quadratic, whatever, and uh, it will look pretty cool. So I hope you learned a lot. We learned what the color burn does. We added two textures together and placed them into the displacement node to have a cool texture transition. This was a very short tutorial, but that's because it's very easy to do. And if you want to become an undeniable force in the 3D space, then I highly recommend watching this video next.